Hello. Uh, in this video, I am trying to introduce uh, the second chapter of uh, Signatures, uh, the textbook prescribed for the third semester uh, degree students of Calicut University in 2020. Uh, this is a memoir. Uh, memoir means an uh, orma uh, So, uh, Pilgrim at Tinder Creek, uh, actually, uh, that is the uh, text you can see on the picture. Uh, this book was published in 1974 and it won coveted no Pulitzer Prize in 1975. And on the right side, the pictures that you are seeing uh, are taken from Tinder Creeks. Uh, so, Tinder Creeks, you understand, uh, it is a beautiful uh, wa a place for waterfall and it's a place of uh, naturalists people who love to go there for tour uh, so pilgrim uh, at tinder creek itself is a contradictory title pilgrim means tirthadagan and uh, tinder creek is a tourist place so now le let's look into the writer annie dillard she was uh, born on 30th april 1945 a person interested in geology entomology and natural history she is known for her famous essays on uh, nature and uh, as I told you, Pilgrim at Tinder Creek is a naturalist classic. Uh, she was a multifaceted person. She, has, she was a poet, naturalist, novelist, essayist, critic, theologian, collegist, and singer. Rubahamuga Pradivya Irno, Annie Dillard, Muna Maklas, Adyate Maglai, Jenichu, Annie Dillard, America, Pennsylvania. So, Let's get into the text. What is written in the text? Uh, Pilgrim at Tinder Creek uh, is a contemplation of world of nature. Prakritiyada dhyanam anadu. Anj paragraph anadu namukka padikyan oladu. The first four paragraphs are highly poetic and the last one is philosophic. If you ask me what is the summary of this uh, entire essay, I would say uh, this essay is a search for God in nature. Prakritiyil deivathe darshikyan. Allengil deivathe inde creations inne respect yan onadu edhi tulladu. Actually, uh, as I told you, the first four paragraphs are uh, uh, poetic, then it tends to be philosophical. Uh, then a summary in the world is simple. Actually, one summer day, she was walking on the Tinder Creek. She was carrying many frogs. But one frog uh, didn't move. So she was uh, quite surprised why this small frog is not moving. So she goes close to it. Suddenly, she understands that uh, the frog was caught by a water bug and the water bug is uh, eating the frog. So so uh, she feels helpless she cannot do anything a mighty creature is uh, swallowing a small creature so suddenly she starts understanding why uh, god has created uh, such a, in uh, the world in such a way you have a mighty creature and you have a, a creature a helpless creature just like a tiger and lamp and then she quotes from different texts and uh, she says uh, to the end that uh, uh, our view of the nature mu must be different. We must respect nature. Only then we can understand nature. She quotes initially from Ghoran uh, saying that uh, the world was not created for fun. Then it quotes from Pascal's view. Pascal uh, said that God created the earth and he absconded. vision. Uh, Einstein said that God is subtle but not malicious. They are not a good person, but they are not a good person. Einstein, after the creation of the earth, uh, God asked uh, the sea, the ocean, not to cross uh, its uh, line. They are not a good person, but they are not a good person. You should not come uh, close to the uh, land. Uh, so, uh, she says that uh, there is a natural order of things uh, which we need to understand. So, we have to spread our vision. Uh, actually, uh, God is not absconded, but our understanding of nature has to spread. We broad vision. We we have to see uh, nature as God. Once you start seeing nature as God, then you will never misuse it. That is her point. Thank you very much.